hosting VM's monthly webinar series. Today's webinar is titled Eight Seinfeld Secrets to Content Marketing Success and will be presented by our very own Dave Parr. As Director of Business Development here at Vertical Measures, Dave brings to the table over 60 years of digital marketing experience and 15 years of marketing and ad experience in key sales, marketing, account management, and managerial positions. Here at Vertical Measures, Dave is responsible for the onboarding and initial engagement with our clients, and I have to say he's pretty good at it. But before we get started and I hand over the presentation, I have a few housekeeping items to note. Today's webinar will be available for viewing by tomorrow, and we will go ahead and send out a email with a link to the recording and the slides if you'd like to review. We'll also be happy to answer any of your questions, so if you take a peek at your webinar interface, there is a little question applet that you can use to send us questions, and I'll go ahead and bring those up to Dave at the end of his presentation. Alternatively, you can also tweet us using the hashtag VMWebinar, and I can get them that way as well. If you do have any technical problems, the best way is just to disconnect and then reconnect, and usually that fixes it. I think that's all of my notes, so I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to our presenter, Dave Haar. Thank you, Quinn, for the uh, kind introduction, and thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us today. Really excited to go through this with everybody. Um, hopefully, you're all excited as well. Um, double check in here, make sure your volume's okay, and you guys can hear me. So, um, I guess if, uh, you can put in the chat box if you guys have any challenges on audio or anything like that, so just let us know. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this. Um, essentially, we've got kind of a fun topic today with the idea of content marketing. Um, as tied in with everybody's favorite sitcom, Seinfeld, which is hands down my all-time favorite show. I've seen all 180 episodes multiple times. People though I know the show were backwards and forwards. So I'm going to try and not wax poetic too much about my Seinfeld knowledge today, but we are going to intermingle that into our, our eight-step methodology, and it's going to be pretty fun. So without further ado, let's go ahead and click through here. Oh, technical problem. All right. So the items that we're going to be going over today is what I like to coin as the Google Zoo. We are going to talk about what content marketing is. We're also going to talk about why content marketing. Then we're going to dive into the Vertical Measures 8-step methodology. Um, and then from there, we've got some next steps and some resources that we're going to pass along to everybody. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about Google and the Google Zoo. Several of you are probably familiar with several of the algorithmic updates and the different platform updates that Google will do um, fairly frequently. And some of them that can be pretty common, or one that we'll talk about first would obviously be the Penguin update that happened in 2012. This was an update that obviously um, was aimed at looking at artificial links and some black hat tactics that people were using to essentially help their websites rank higher. Then we have everybody's favorite little panda here. He looks so cute, but uh, the panda update obviously um, a lot of businesses suffered by some strategies that they had employed in the past that were no longer uh, going to help them rank higher. So that was another update that obviously um, affected a lot of businesses and their current strategies or the strategies that they had been using. Um, and more recently, you may be familiar with the Hummingbird update in 2013. It's actually more of a platform update as opposed to an algorithmic update, but another one that really kind of impacted how people use the web, how the search engines, how Google uh, filtered those results for people. Um, and this all kind of lumps into the idea of Google is always making these changes. Google is always looking to continue to provide a better user experience for people that use Google every day. Um, and as a marketer and as a business owner and somebody with a site that you want to have rank, um, it can be easy to kind of get caught up in a lot of these things. And what are the latest and greatest? What are we hearing? What is Google saying? What's going to roll out? What do I need to do to change my site? Um, with that said, a strategy that we've employed and a strategy that we help our clients employ is the idea of content marketing, to really kind of cut through the idea of needing to always be responding to every little tweak and update that might uh, have an impact on a site's ranking. The idea of content marketing is much more of a holistic approach that allows your business to essentially develop great content and be found organically by pushing great content out to people when they are searching online. So let's start a little bit with the definition of content marketing. Content marketing is the art of providing relevant, valuable content to your customers without selling or interrupting them. And I bolded that because that is really an important component to this. Um, this is not like traditional marketing. This isn't buying a TV commercial. This isn't putting an ad in the newspaper. This is the idea of making sure that your information is found without selling or interrupting them. 
Um, and instead of pitching your products or services, you're delivering that information that makes your prospects more informed before, they're buy before they buy. Everybody's heard the analogy of how informed people are um, before they go in and maybe buy a car or make any type of a purchase decision. And this really kind of embraces the way that people are online searching, doing research, finding out as much as they can before they pull the trigger on something that may be $5, $10, or maybe something like a home or a car purchase that could be thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and with that said, if you deliver consistent, ongoing, valuable information to your prospects, um, we feel as though that they will ultimately reward you with their business and their loyalty. Um, that's kind of a, an overview definition of content marketing as we see it, um, and we will kind of continue to dive into that a little bit further as we talk about the why and the how. Um, one thing to note is that content marketing is not a 30-day ROI. This is actually something that comes up fairly frequently when we're talking to clients and when they're coming to us and asking us to help them with a strategy or to help them um, you know, kind of dive into this idea that they need to be embracing more content and richer content on their site. Um, but this is not something where you just turn it on and after 30 days you can say, I'm sure this is what we will see, or we will notice this right away, and we put th this many dollars into it, so we should be able to get this much back out. Um, this is more of a long-term long approach and an ongoing strategy. And with that said, the long-term payoffs can be huge. So with that said, why content marketing? I'm going to talk a little bit about this guy, Bill Ballou. Um, who actually did a pretty cool, um, I guess we could call them multiple different case studies through a course that he was teaching a few years ago. Um, some of you may be familiar with this or may be familiar with um, some of these examples, but if not, I'm just going to walk through a couple of them. Um, what Bill did is he essentially had a class of students and he wanted to kind of do this experiment to see if the idea of generating great content on an ongoing basis would actually really help a site rank without doing anything else. And what Bill asked his students to do is he asked them to actually do some a fair amount of blogging every day. I believe it was about two articles per day. Um, they needed to be, I think it was three to 400 words per article, um, and they could certainly be longer than that. The students could obviously pick a topic that they were interested in or that they had a lot of knowledge in, and from there, create the site, start doing the blogging, and let's kind of see what types of results that we get. And the results were actually pretty cool. I'm just gonna click through here. Oops, sorry about that. There we go. Um, and this is one example with regards to the health and nutrition niche that one of the students had written on. Um, the goal of these next three case studies is to kind of show you what I guess I would describe a little bit as a hockey stick approach. You can see here um, that when these students started doing their blogging, there wouldn't have been a lot of traction. You do see some spikes early on, but then over time, as you continue to read the analytics, you'll see that the overall traffic continues to grow steadily after there's kind of some of those uh, peaks and valleys or some of that volatility early on. Um, here's another example, too. This was uh, someone who was writing on the entertainment niche, doing that blogging, writing a couple blog posts per day, making sure that they were good, unique content. Slowly but surely, they did have one spike there. It looks like um, around March or April of 2013. But then as they continued to keep blogging and build up that traction, you see that the overall lift is pretty awesome. Um, and then one final example in the travel niche, you'll see very, very low, one little spike as well. Uh, but then over time, you see that the results um, our, our, it looks like around May of 2013, the results really start to pick up with regards to the overall traffic. So with that said, I think the Bill Ballou example is really pretty awesome. We talk about it a lot with our clients in some of our workshops and seminars, but I don't want to take just Bill's word for it. We also kind of want to look at some other research that's out there as well with the idea of content marketing and why this is a great strategy. So the good people of HubSpot have some great research as well. To go ahead and go through a few of those numbers to kind of illustrate the idea of generating this great content produces results. So through some of their research, um, they have essentially found that both B2B and B2C companies with 100 to 200 pages really will generate about two and a half times more leads than those with 50 or fewer pages. Companies with 50 to 100 pages will generate 48% more traffic than companies that don't have 50 to 100 pages. Companies that blog 15 or more times per month tend to get about 15 times, percent, or 15 times more traffic than companies that don't blog. Um, companies see a 55% increase in leads from increasing their landing pages from 10 to 15. Average company will see 45% growth in traffic when increasing total blog articles from 11 to 20, from 20 to 21 to 50. Um, and last but not least, companies that increase blogging from three to five times per month to six to eight times per month can double their leads. So some really awesome research. Um, this study was actually done recently through HubSpot. HubSpot continues to um, grow their user database and has compiled a lot of great research. I think they actually just are at about 15,000 customers now 
So looking forward to some additional research that they'll be putting out with regards to this methodolo methodology. So really, all of this leads us to the research, what we've done, um, what we've learned from other people in the space, different things like a Bill Ballou case study, leads us to the vertical measures eight-step process. And this is the time in the presentation where it's going to get a little bit fun, because we're going to tell it via the cast of Seinfeld. So hopefully you're all Seinfeld fans. I mentioned I'm a really big fan. Some of you on the call, this may be like way before your time, and, and maybe I'm dating myself as I used to watch the show in the 80s and 90s. But we're going to have fun with this and kind of just dive into our methodology and how it aligns with uh, the cast of what I would say is the greatest sitcom of all time. So with regards to our process, the first pro step in the process is going to be strategy. You're always going to want to make sure that you're starting with strategy in mind. This isn't something where you just jump in and create some articles or just put some pieces of content out there and see what happens. This really needs to start at the ground up with the idea of a good strategy and making sure that everybody's on board with that strategy. I've got Larry David assigned with this step as he is one of the co-creators of this TV show, kind of one of the people that really helped craft and form the idea of the show and how great the show was over the years in tandem with Jerry along the way. So with regards to strategy, um, what you'll want to do is you want to think about the big picture and develop that holistic strategy that includes content marketing. You're going to want to consider your benchmarks, what is your website traffic like, conversions, cost per lead, any of those metrics that you're looking at to kind of establish some of those baselines and benchmarks where you are today. Um, and from there, you really do want to make sure that you identify what success is going to look like. Um, that's one of the things that we talk to our clients about all the time early on in the process. And the way I like to, I guess, position it is, at what point do we kind of high-five each other or pop the champagne and say, we, we've hit that success metric or we've looked at what we needed to do to be successful, whether it's additional traffic or conversions or leads. Um, and let's talk about that early in the process instead of kind of just waiting and see what happens. And last but not least, one of the things that's really important in this stage is you want to be able to research your audience. And that can come in a lot of different forms. It can be through surveys. It can be through actually speaking with some of your clients, kind of looking internally at different clients, uh, at your audience that you like to work with. Um, and the people that are interacting with your site, how they're becoming clients or leads and, and turning into business. So it is really important to do that research and learn as much as you can so that then that will help your strategy throughout this process. And one of the things that we like to tell people um, is that you really do want to think like a publisher. I'm sure everyone on the call is kind of familiar with this idea of a magazine or a newspaper and how they're constantly putting out issues, publications, special issues, and things like that throughout the year, um, weekly, daily, or monthly, or however that publication frequency would lie. With that said, if you have a site, if you are a marketer, if you're a business, you want to employ that same strategy to think like a publisher. You wouldn't just kind of um, shoot from the hip and say, let's just do this article on that, or let's just push out a special issue on that. Um, you'd want to continue to think about the entire year, the calendar, what's our timeline, how does this all flow, how often are we putting out information, and that's really kind of one of the analogies we use, like to use for anybody that's at the strategy stage and when they're kind of tackling this idea of content marketing. Second in our eight steps is going to be ideation. I've got Cosmo Kramer aligned with ideation because as everybody knows on the show, Kramer was always the guy with big ideas, always had different ideas that he was coming to the table with, some not so good, some were actually pretty good. So with that said, ideation is my Cosmo Kramer. Um, when you're looking at ideation, you really want to look at inviting both your stakeholders and your employees into this process. This is something that really is far-reaching um, and something that a lot of people within the company can help you out when you're kind of thinking of the different idea ideas that you're going to want to drum up here when you're creating content. Um, what are some of the questions that come up the most? Um, your sales team can be a great reference for this as well because um, many times they can be the ones that are on the front lines and in the trenches um, talking to clients, talking to prospective clients, getting feedback there out in the field. Um, and what are your competitors doing um, involving content? We want to look at some of those things as well and kind of do some research to see what are they doing, what do we think they're getting some traction on, what are we seeing that they're putting on social media, what are people sharing of theirs. And if they're a direct competitor of yours and maybe they're doing some things that you're not doing, you would want to take note of that as well. Um, and then last but not least, what information does your audience need to make a purchase? Create content around those things. Again, we always need to be thinking about either our audience or our prospective clients and things like that. And if we can do the research to find out of what they're looking for, we want to basically take that information and create content around that. And the idea is here, we essentially want to be doing something that's going to involve a brainstorm. We want to huddle up. We want to put pen to paper. Really, there's no idea is a bad idea at this point. 
Um, sorry, I had to interject this slide. I don't know if people have seen these, but these are those Vinfond oh. stock photo arts, and I had to figure out a way to get one into today's presentation. So. Um, I thought this might be a good place to interject that. But the idea, again, is that doing this ideation involves many aspects of your team, and don't be afraid to talk to everybody from your stakeholders and CEO all the way down to your sales team, um, administrative assistants, and things like that, because they all can be a wealth of information. When thinking about the ideation, um, you're going to want to obviously take into consideration that you don't want to always be talking just about your business um, and kind of bombarding people with your marketing messages or percentages off or why you're great. People are going online to find information about you in, in many different ways. And they're looking to be inspired, they're looking to be educated, and they're looking for the answers to their questions. So it really isn't the idea of just let's always tell people we've got this sale going on or it's this time of year or end of year or these are all the reasons why we're great. Um, people are going on because they want to find out about you and see maybe your reviews. They want to find out different ideas or why you're great on their own. And you want to take that into consideration when you're in that ideation stage. There's a lot of tools out there that you can use. Um, on, honestly, very simple tools like using Google Suggest, related searches. This is one that our team has used as well with Keyword Tool I.O. You can go to YouTube and actually do some of those searches. When you're online, you probably all notice this, that many times any of the SERPs will tend to kind of anticipate what they think you might be typing in. And when th with that said, you can find a lot of great information from that. This is an example of a Grand Canyon search. You can see on here that what people are searching for the Grand Canyon. Um, they're also looking for things like tours, skywalk, disaster, university, jump swings, national park, and things like that. So as you're doing research on your products, your services, your industry, or your brand, these types of search engine autofill or, or suggest can be a great tool for you as well. And then from there, you essentially want to look at, as we've built on the strategy and we're now at the ideation stage, we want to look at creating a content calendar. Many places online, you can download some examples of this. I believe we have one on our site as well, which has been downloaded countless times by people over the years. Um, and a lot of great information that you can start with. Let's download the calendar and let's fill in our information and how we're going to push this information out that makes sense with your resources and how you want to be touching your audience. Um, next up on the, the eight-step process, and this is actually where it starts to get pretty fun, is the idea of content creation. I've got Elaine assigned with this step in the process as well because Elaine obviously worked for the Jay Peterman catalog, worked in the publishing business. There was many times throughout the show that she was always trying to drum up good ideas with regards to how they were going to sell more jackets for Jay Peterman or I believe it was uh, come up with ideas for the urban sombrero. Um, with your content creation, your, um, with your ideas in hand, this can now begin. Depending on the format, it can actually be pretty low cost as well. Um, content creation doesn't have to be something where you're essentially investing you know, tens of thousands and thousands of dollars in different things. Thinking of an idea where you're putting out information onto your blog and different things like that, it can actually be pretty low cost and pretty easy to do. Um, and keep in mind that this is a very competitive space. Um, so only the best is going to rise to the top. If you're in an industry where you have competitors out there that have their blog going, they have information on their site, they're pushing out information as well, the best is essentially going to rise to the top. Um, and you want to kind of keep that in mind and see how the traction is going with your content. And you really don't want to waste your time on creating content that's going to be subpar. It's really not something where you're going to cut a lot of corners and you're just going to kind of, let's copy and paste this and do it 10 times um, and not really put a lot of thought into it. Genuinely putting your thought into it and making sure that the content is well thought out and is um, aligning with what the research that you've done on your audience and the information that they're looking for is going to help you in the long run. Back to the Bill Ballou example, um, looking at the information that those students were blogging about, it needed to be unique and it needed to be stuff that wasn't just, okay, I copied this and pushed it out. It needed to be something that was original content and that's where that approach uh, benefited them. These are some examples of create, uh, content that you can create, everything from blog posts to lists, white papers, podcasts, ebooks, landing pages. There's all kinds of different things that you can do on here. Really, the sky is the limit. Um, and when you're online kind of looking at what you can find online in your industry or what your competitors are doing or some things that you might find on a site that's not even in your industry but makes sense for what you're trying to accomplish, really there, there's kind of the, the opportunities are endless with regard to the types of content that you can create. Um, and from there, one of the conversations that we have with a lot of our clients as well, and we're helping them with their strategy, is that you want to look at this idea of playing content marketing money ball. Um, if someone says to us, hey, we really want you to create a viral video, or we need to create uh, something that's going to get downloaded hundreds of thousands of times, that strategy can be really hard um, to essentially knock it out of the park right out of the gates. You're going to want to hit a lot of singles. You're going to need walks. You're going to need guys to get hit by a pitch every once in a while. 
getting on base is the strategy. With that said, when we're talking about content, um, developing lots of pieces of content and waiting to see how people interact with those. And every once in a while, you're going to have a home run. You might even have a grand slam as well, but you can't go up there thinking all I need to do is hit home runs and grand slams and I'm just going to dedicate a ton of money and resources to getting those home runs and grand slams. You want to start with the idea of singles, getting on base, um, getting some traction, blog post articles, some things, and then from there, um, those results should translate into getting some of those bigger successes and things that people are going to download and, and interact with really well. Next in our eight steps is optimization. And I've got the soup Nazi aligned with optimization because everybody knows that the soup Nazi made better soup than anybody else in New York City. And how did he do that? He essentially did a lot of optimizing, trial and error, um, and went through the process with regards to develop what you know, were arguably the best recipes in town. Um, with that said, when we're thinking about content, um, our content needs to be optimized as well. Um, when I say certain keywords or phrases, we're not talking about some old tactics with regards to keyword stuffing and going crazy and make sure, making sure that you're mentioning things multiple times throughout the article. We want to, again, keep this in mind with our audience, and in turn, the search, search engines will respond as well. So once you have created your content, it's not enough just to, to write it and to let it go. We also want to make sure that it's optimized and taking SEO in mind, looking the keywords that you're trying to rank for, and making sure that that content is doing as much as it can for you. Um, by optimizing for those terms, you're ensuring that the search engine result pages um, associate your content with those search queries. Um, and you want to start by creating your content for your audience. I kind of touched on this a little bit already, but um, search engines are important, but you don't want to be creating your content just thinking, how is Google or Bing going to interact with this? Is Google going to rank this better? We want to think about our audience and the information that they're going online to find, and how can my business answer that question for them better than anyone else on the web. Um, lots of uh, examples of optimization can include, uh, can include acquiring links, um, looking at the descriptions and your meta tags, really taking into con consideration the idea of your SEO now that you've created this content. So the two don't really work in silos. The two work in tandem with the idea that you've created this content, but let's keep that optimization and SEO in mind to make sure that it's doing as much for you online as it can. Now these next two steps on promotion and distribution many times can kind of lump together a little bit. So I'm going to do the best I can to kind of explain how they might be a little bit different. With promotion, you know, what you're essentially looking to do is tell people about it. And just putting it on your site isn't essentially going to be enough. Um, I've actually heard the analogy that sometimes it can be common for one of the least common places somebody would find your information would be uh, solely by finding it on your site. They might have found it through other different places, whether it's social media, paid search efforts, and those are things that link them back to your site. So the idea of really getting out there and promoting this, you've developed the content, you've invested time, energy, and money into this content, but let's just not put it on the site and wait to see what happens. Let's use our social channels. Let's acquire links to get people linking to that content. Let's utilize paid advertising efforts as well to make sure that people are seeing it when they're doing some searches or maybe looking at our competitor sites and things like that. Um, and one last thing to remember when promoting your content, it has to be about understanding your audience and the information that they're looking for and where they're looking for it. One of the things that comes up very regularly when we're talking to people as well is the idea of social promotion and should I be using every network or which network should I be using. We like to incorporate with our clients that you would drill down and look at those social channels that people that you're trying to interact with would be using. Um, does Twitter make sense for that? Um, you know, people talk a lot about, okay, I'm hearing all kinds of things about like Instagram or Snapchat. Are those areas where your audience is? Um, maybe Facebook is the audience where they are and we want to drill down and just maybe focus on that channel and where we're going to go ahead and use that to promote your content and get people onto your site. Um, some examples with regards to content promotion can be through paid search efforts, social channels, LinkedIn, Reddit, Stumble Upon and Outbrain can be some other examples too to make sure that your content is found where those eyeballs are. Now with that said, talking a little bit about distribution and how these can be kind of similar as well as being different is the idea of distribution and the way I like to describe it is distribution is going to be off your site. It's getting out there. And I use the analogy of Jerry as he used to always be out on the road doing his shows, promoting himself. It's really the same kind of concept here, that the content is on your site, but the idea of distribution is about reaching those people off-site um, and then directing customers to the content on your site. I've got a couple examples on here. One of the ways that we'll do it a lot and we think works pretty well is the idea of repurposing this content. One example would be that you've got a PowerPoint created for a webinar. You can certainly utilize SlideShare to get that PowerPoint out in another way so that people will see that information and end up interacting with your business either through SlideShare or linking through to your site. Another example would be that you've created a video for your site. 
Um, and you can certainly do a lot of things with that video where you can cut that up into snippets. It could be into more bite-sized portions. You could create a transcript of that video um, and then do things like posting that transcript on LinkedIn would be a great way to get people to interact with it online, link back to your site. So one of the models um, and that we'll use a lot when describing this is our hub and spoke methodology. Um, and this is actually an example of one of our most successful pieces of content that we've had on the site that people have interacted with, downloaded, and we've been able to um, you know, capture a lot of information that way. Um, with that said, utilizing this hub and spoke model, um, we'll take this piece of content and we'll be promoting this by several different channels, whether it's through social, other sites that we're linking back to, whether it's through a video, whether it's through a transcript, um, whether it's through our blog. We've got this great piece of content. We've got something that we know our uh, people that we interact with wanted to download and find more information about. So from there, we wanted to come up with a multitude of different ways that people would essentially be able to interact with this information and link to our site, click through and actually download the kit, or maybe if they don't want to download it, they took away some snippets as well um, through our blog and through our video and transcripts of this information without downloading the entire kit. So the hub and spoke model is an, uh, what we employ not only for ourselves, but for the people that we work with, this idea of taking this great piece of content and then let's branch it out, let's repurpose it, let's do a lot of different things with it now that you've created it, it's a great strong piece of content. Uh, the next step in, in our eight-step methodology is going to be lead nurture. And the reason why I have everybody's favorite postman on here associated with lead nurture is one of the most common forms of lead nurture will actually be through email. Um, and obviously, the show ran before we really had a lot of email, but I can imagine if the show is still running, um, email and mail are very, being very synonymous. And I think a lot of businesses in the past did a lot with junk mail or direct mail or different mailings that they would do. Now that we're in the digital age and we can capture people's information a lot easier, um, it's really about capturing that information and then being able to lead nurture that and, and nurture people through the cycle via email. Um, from there, obviously you're capturing this information and you want to make sure um, to continue, uh, you want to use that lead to consider, I'm sorry, you want to nurture that lead to continue to consider your product or service. Lead nurture is really something um, that you can put a lot of time and energy into with regards to how are people interacting with our site, what is the information that they found, what are they downloading, and then from there, kind of using the analogy that, that many people will use, the idea of where they are in the buying cycle or where are they in the funnel. So from there, maybe somebody's just clicked around and they're finding some general information. Maybe people have done some things where they're doing some comparisons or they've actually done something that's really alluding towards the fact that they are further along in this process and our lead nurture should essentially uh, correlate with that as well. Um, and one last item on this, you don't want to discount the importance of your content when you're following up with them. Um, it's not just a matter of an email that really isn't engaging or something that someone's going to get in their inbox and then not really think is something that they want to follow up on. You want to make sure that your subject line is something that's been developed uh, with them in mind. You want to make sure that it is engaging. Everybody gets bombarded with so many messages in their inbox every day that how are you going to cut through that clutter? They've interacted with you, now you want to make sure that they have some additional opportunities to find out some more information about your business. Um, another element to take into consideration too is that so many people are checking information on their phone that you want to make sure that things look good on their phone, again taking into consideration things like the subject line. Um, you don't want to just develop this with the idea of people being on a desktop or maybe at work checking their email. Um, you want to take this into consideration that especially with a younger demographic, so many people are almost exclusively sometimes just checking their email on their phone, making sure that your message is coming through clear and concise and people are able to get a good message from you that looks professional, whether using mobile devices, tablets, or certainly on a desktop and checking in a more traditional environment. Um, our last step in this process, our, our process is going to be measurement. And I've got Jackie Child aligned with measurement because obviously on the show he was very analytical. You had to take into consideration uh, with, your, with your measurement looking at your analytics, um, taking an analytics approach to you know, what's going on with your site, how people are engaging with your content. Um, and if you're not using some sort of tool, which I know most people, it's pretty common to be using analytics. If you're not, and sometimes we actually talk to some people that may not be using it or maybe aren't using it to its full potential, you want to make sure that you are doing that. Um, with regards to measurement, you want to go back again, and I talked about this early in the presentation, the idea of those success metrics. You want to look at measuring these goals against those success metrics to really be able to say, has this been a success or not? And let's look at that strategy and how well is it going? Um, was your strategy successful? Um, how do those metrics compare with your benchmarks? Maybe you have a strategy in place where you're looking to be in 90 days, 120 days, six months, one year. Let's look at those metrics. Are we exceeding them? Are we not pacing where we need to be? Um, and let's take an analytical approach to see whatever those metrics are that we're trying to track and how we're pacing throughout this process. 
Um, what improvements might be necessary? What is your ROI on all this? Um, and what can you change to increase that ROI? Um, one of the things that I like to kind of describe this entire process is we've got these eight steps in place, but from there, you want to kind of rinse and repeat. You go through these eight steps, and at the end, you're looking at measurement. But from there, it's not just, okay, we did all eight steps, and we measured it, and it worked or it didn't work. You want to be continuing to refine this process. You want to be continuing to look and see what content is working, what's getting some traction, what are things that did really well, maybe what are some things that didn't do really well. Um, speaking on behalf of the agency, we have pieces of content on our site that people are interacting with years after they have been posted. Um, in the digital space, information obviously is constantly changing, but some of those fundamental tenets and some of the information that people are finding is uh, it's stuff that they're interacting with or downloading well after we've put it up. So we don't want to look at, okay, how did it do in the first month or the first two or three months? Um, we're really looking to see at some of those pieces that have been very successful over time. So with that said, I've essentially gone through all eight steps. I'm going to run through them real quick one more time. We've got our strategy, which is what we're going to start for. That's Larry David, our show creator. We get into ideation. Cosmo Kramer was our ideation man, somebody always coming up with ideas, and you can employ that strategy with regard to the ideation that you're doing for your website. Um, then from there, it gets a little bit fun. You get to actually create the content. Um, Elaine was our consummate content creator when she was writing things for the J. Peterman catalog, so I've got her assigned with content creation. Once it's, once it's created, then we want to look at making sure that we optimize that content as well. Um, keeping SEO in mind, keeping our audience in mind, what are they looking for, what do we want to make sure that this information is ranking well for. From there, it's all about making sure that we do promote our content as well. It's not enough for it just to sit on our site and hope that people find it. We want to make sure that uh, we're doing everything we can to promote it accordingly so that people will find it in other channels as well. And we also want to make sure that we're distributing it as well into many different places and repurposing that content as much as possible. From there, we've got these people interacting on our site, so we want to make sure that we're going to nurture those leads through this process. There's a lot of cool things you can do with lead nurture, a lot of things you can do with automated tools to kind of help you see how people are interacting with you. And we want to make sure we're, we're being thoughtful with that lead nurture as well. And then last but not least, we want to make sure that we're measuring everything as well. Rinse and repeat, look at what's working, look at what may not be working, and how we can go ahead and tweak that strategy, tweak some of that content, optimize things a little bit differently, maybe do some additional research on our audience to make sure that we're doing a really good job with this. So with that said, um, we did promise you some uh, opportunities here for some additional resources. Um, there's a ton of great information that you can find online. There's a sample of a few websites here, including our site, where you can find a lot of great information. Um, looking at different people's blogs, doing a Google search with regards to content marketing and the different elements of content marketing that you want to focus on. Tons of great information, and these are a few sites that you can certainly check out. Um, we also have our free download on our site where you can download the book, um, Arnie's second book, Content Marketing Works, Eight Steps to Transform Your Business. So if you kind of enjoyed this sampling with regards to the eight steps that we've talked about today, this book is a great resource. Download it completely free of charge, um, and you can really drill down and learn a lot more about those eight steps. With that said, um, you're obviously joining this call, and again, I appreciate everybody doing that and taking the time out of your day to learn some more information. Um, but there might be some people on your team that would like some more information as well. Um, and this site below can be a great opportunity for you to kind of get some more information, see some short videos, see some of the influencers in the space talking about the idea of content marketing and really why um, you wanted to start content marketing. Not off in the future, you should have started it already, and if you haven't, this is really the best time to get started with that strategy. So with that said, that's all I have today. I want to thank everybody for their time. Um, I know everybody's very busy. I try to keep this short and sweet. Um, but I'm going to turn the floor over to Quinn, and I think we're going to do some Q&A. Yeah, yeah, we've got some time. Um, so, so I've got a couple of different questions from people, people actually about social promotion. promotion. So, so I'm trying to think, think of who your promotional, promotional guy was for Seinfeld. Who was that again? Uh, promotion was Jay Peterman. Okay. okay. So what would Jay Peterman do if he didn't have a big social following, but he wanted to promote his content? What would be the best way to make an impact with little followers? Maybe we can tag team this. Yeah, I mean, and, and I guess it goes back to one of the things I mentioned, the idea of keep in mind how your audience is interacting on social. So is it Facebook? Is it Twitter? Is, it, is LinkedIn really the area where you need to be? Um, and from there, you know, I also had a slide in here that kind of talked about the idea of you don't just want to bombard people with that same kind of salesy message. Um, you want to look at, look at educating your audience, inspiring your audience, and giving them information that they would want to interact with. That's really a kind of a good holistic, organic way that you can build up that following. Many times you'll see a lot of people will essentially just kind of bombard with those advertising messages and things like that, and people don't really 
uh, interact with that too well on social. There's also been a lot of information that's come out recently too with the idea that organic reach on social channels is becoming increasingly difficult. Uh, many people would even say it's almost becoming impossible to reach people. They've liked you on Facebook or they're following you on Twitter. And you're trying to interact with them, but as Facebook continues to kind of take over the world with regards to their reach, uh, being publicly traded, they're looking at more ways that people uh, would have to pay to get that type of engagement. So one of the things that, that can be very common is looking at retargeting strategies, looking at ways that if people have interacted on your site, let's now kind of interact with them on some of these social platforms as well to get them to be a follower and to click through to our site uh, and, and essentially engage with you there as well. But it's really not an overnight thing. It's not like there's a, fl a switch you can flip and just say, I need a thousand followers or I need a lot more people. It is something where it's kind of organic and you need to kind of continue to work at it. Um, and then also once they're there, don't forget about them. You know, you don't want to just say, well, now I've got them. They're going to be with me forever. A lot of times people can fall off as well if you're not providing good, relevant content to them through those social channels. Yeah, and I think I would just add to that, that, you know, a lot of times in this day and age, you need to get a little bit of money behind your promotion to get the ball rolling. And it's still kind of the wild west out there when it comes to social promotion, and especially paid promotion. So Facebook, like Dave said, is constantly changing their kind of paid strategy, and Twitter just had paid ads come out recently. So putting a few dollars behind a post or a campaign or something will at least get the ball rolling, and then you'll start to see a little bit more of the traction gain that you want to see and get some of the results that you're looking for. So definitely paid promotion is a good place to start, even if you have a small budget, just a few dollars behind a post here and there. So we've got another question um, from Morgan. She asked, what are some strategies to use when incorporating keywords into a website for the optimization stage? So what would the soup not be? In this case. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I guess it, it, that's a great question. The idea, going back to the idea of researching your audience um, and kind of understanding how are they searching online to find this information. So I guess if we were to use the soup Nazi example, you know, people would be going online and maybe typing in who's got the best soup in town, who's got the best um, you know, clam chowder that I've ever tasted, things like that. You would want to kind of take some of those terms and then develop some content around that. A lot of times you'll see people do things that might be aggregations of lists. Um, a lot of times people like to give away some of the information too. I think it was actually with a Chipotle that just gave away their guacamole yeah. recipe. Mm -hmm. um, so think of like kind of the traction they got for that. Um, you know, Chipotle obviously has a huge footprint. Everybody's probably tried their chips and guacamole at some point in time. Um, you could take the approach of, oh my gosh, like why would they give away the secret sauce? Why would they give away their recipe? But really, in fact, what they're doing is just continuing to build up that audience of people that can now maybe try and make it on their own. But I, I think in the long run, something like a strategy like that, thinking of your audience, giving some information away, employing those keywords as well so that it's going to be found okay, helps build up that loyal audience that's then going to continue to come back to your business. Yeah, and you can also be a little even more tactical, you know, thinking of, of course, the kind of semantic phrases that people will be searching for, but then doing your research with Google Keyword Tool as well to see what are the competitions for these keywords, what are the volumes for these keywords, what's the different combinations of words that I can use, but also be very natural about. Because, of course, like we learned at the very beginning of Dave's presentation, there's a lot about Google penalties that have come out in the last past few years. So if we're trying to manipulate the search engines by using stuffed keywords on our content, maybe using it many times in our content, then we're going to run into problems. So doing a little research, being semantic, and also being natural in all the optimization you're doing. Also, we have another question from Morgan. She asked, how long should strategy take? That's kind of a big question, or maybe it could be a small one. I don't know. Yeah, you know, um, that's another good question, too. I mean, again, we've talked a lot about the fact that this isn't something where you just flip the switch um, and turn it on and say, boom, okay, now in 30 days we're going to have this and it's going to be great and that's how much we've invested. You know, strategy can really be as much or as little as you're going to put into it. And also to the point I made here at the end, that you're going to kind of rinse and repeat a little bit. You're going to go through this process. You started with your strategy and then you get into ideation, then you're creating content. At the end, you're measuring it. That strategy is going to be kind of an ever-evolving thing. You want to start with, okay, here's our strategy we put in place, but I would not get married to that, and I wouldn't say, nope, that's our strategy we did in 2015, and five years later, that's our strategy. We're sticking to it. Um, you're going to find a lot of things when you're doing that measurement um, that will essentially point you in, okay, with the strategy, we want to compound on that a little bit more, um, or maybe we want to take some of this away and maybe drill down and laser focus a little bit better. Um, so with that said, I mean, it could be something that really takes 
you know, maybe a few weeks to develop. Um, I don't think it's something that necessarily just comes out of a 30-minute brainstorm and you say, boom, here's our strategy. Um, but it could be something that's very much ongoing as well as you're going through this process and you're measuring things. Or maybe you find some more information. Maybe your business changes as well, too. Maybe you add some more products or services. Maybe you have different elements of your site that people are interacting with. And the strategy needs to reflect that as well. Yeah, and I don't know if you've noticed this, Dave, but I think a lot of people have this idea that strategy should take a long time and a lot of thought should be put into it, maybe thousands of dollars. And yeah, I think it's important to have a strategy, but I think like you were talking about with a lot of your statistics from HubSpot, the more pages you have, the more posts you have on your site, the more you get that traffic, you get those leads, you get the business. So I think, yes, absolutely focus on strategy, but also get started. Start producing content, start putting stuff on your site, because the more and more that you produce content, the more you're going to kind of create that 1% gain to get, you know, a, a marginal difference over a few months, like we've seen in Bill Baloo especially. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, um, yeah, we've gotten a couple comments here of people throwing out um, <laughs> I love these suggestions, ideas. Yeah. yeah, so we've got, what about George? He could represent keeping campaigns on the cheap. Promoting content marketing doesn't have to be expensive. <laughs> yeah, you know, I worked really hard. I tried to figure out how to get George into this, obviously, as an integral cast member, but that is great. George was uh, the perennial cheapskate on the show, and yes, I mean, there are a lot of opportunities to promote things that don't have to cost a fortune, especially when you look at some things on some social channels. Um, but we do like to kind of uh, explain to people as well that if you're going to spend time and energy and money developing a piece of content, sometimes people will fall into the trap of, okay, I spent $1,000 developing this and I'm going to spend 100 bucks promoting it. I really don't think that's a good strategy to say, okay, I'm going to take a 10% rule or whatever I invested right. in it, I'm then going to spend that much on the back end. Um, there can be pieces of content that can be great for you over time. Maybe you spend $1,000 developing this great piece of content, and you might spend ten, twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 over years promoting it if it's something that's still working for you. So, but I do like that suggestion. Um, maybe as I continue to refine this presentation, I'll, I'll figure out a way to incorporate George and his cheapness into the presentation as well. Well, I don't know who Babu is, but... Yeah, no, this is great, too. Uh, you could use Babu to represent understanding your audience, and yes, that is... That is very good suggestion. Babu Bot was the restaurant owner, and he had multiple different um, themes to his restaurant. Jerry came in and made lots of suggestions, and then Babu ended up going out of business and paying oh. Jerry for that. But yes, um, I think he actually had a Pakistani restaurant, but he was serving hot dogs and hamburgers. So <laughs> he didn't really understand his audience. He yeah. probably should have looked at, if I have a Pakistani restaurant, I should probably make sure that the food is uh, honest to that cuisine. And then his customers probably would have been a lot happier. So nice. good suggestion. Well, you know, I, I feel kind of behind the loop because I have not really seen Seinfeld. Um, my only claim to fame is that my cousin was one of Jerry's girlfriends. Oh. So, but I do think that this is really great to understand this in this way, and I do want to go out and watch Seinfeld. So I hope you all enjoyed it and learned a little bit, and feel free to contact either Dave or I afterwards if you want to continue the discussion. We do do these webinars monthly, so our next one's going to be June 18th. And we're going to have Andrew Davis, who's actually kind of a big deal, and he's going to be talking about increasing demand. So we kind of talk about more of creating the content that people are already looking for, and he talks about how to create the demand for your product. So a little bit of a different way of looking at content marketing, but still very, very valid. Um, so we, again, will send out a link with the webinar recording and the slides, so we'll get that out to you by tomorrow. And I really appreciate everyone coming, and I, I think that's it. So thanks, Dave. Thanks, everybody. It was a pleasure. Bye.